A while ago we made these plywood caster wheels and they have served us well. However, we have an idea to improve the design. Currently the caster wheels are made out of plywood and they are relatively loud when moving around the workshop and you can feel the small imperfections on the floor. We could update the caster wheel by adding a rubber to the wheel disc to fix that. So today we will try out different rubber sealants and molds to figure out the best way to make the rubbers for the casters. Since the caster wheel is made out of two 9mm thick components, the best option is to make the pocket cuts at the edges of each disc for the rubber to sit in. And when gluing the wheel disc together, we could secure the bearing and the rubber between them. The concept is super simple, however we have to make the rubber wheels for the new design. And that presents two problems. First of all, I'm unsure which of the rubber sealants would be most suitable for this project. So we have to test them to see which performs the best. And the second problem is I have no experience in making molds. But both of these problems can be easily overcome by getting started. So without much hesitation I load a laminated plywood sheet on the CNC and start cutting the first mold. The idea is to make the mold out of two plywood components with engraved circular pockets. When the parts are joined together the cutouts would form the shape of the rubber wheel. For us to be able to inject the sealants in the mold, one of the parts has six holes at the bottom of the pockets. But before we proceed with the injections, I quickly chamfer the edges of the mold components and countersink the injection holes. The chamfered edges should make it easier to take apart the mold after the sealants have cured. I use M8 screws to secure the mold components together, and once everything is assembled, we can number the sealants and inject them into the mold. Since I'm not entirely sure how well the mold will work, I only made one, so we can test 5 sealants at a time. If the mold is successful, we will remove the rubber from the pockets and test the remaining sealants. However, if it fails, we won't have wasted too much material. Anyway, after the first 5 sealants are injected in the mold, we have to wait 2 days for it to set. And after the time was passed, I was curious to see the results. So I removed the screws from the mold and tried to separate the parts, which turned out to be way more challenging than I anticipated. To make it easier, I cut these small plywood wedges. However, I soon realized it might not be possible to separate all five molds simultaneously. So I separate each mold with a miter saw. Well, it didn't help much either. In the end, I only managed to get two of the molds open. But in the process, I broke the rubber wheel in half. So it didn't help us to learn about the sealants that much. For the second test, I decided to squeeze a little bit of each sealant on an offcut piece. This way we could learn the characteristics of each sealant and select the ones that would better serve as the wheel rubber. While waiting for the sealants to cure, we have to make the new mold design. To simplify taking apart the mold, I thought it would be better to make it out of multiple smaller parts. So the new mold would consist of a base panel, a central piece and four smaller pieces that would shape the outside of the wheel. Now we have the molds ready and it's time to see which of the sealants we should use for the wheels. After a quick inspection it seems the fourth 6th and 7th sealants were the best option for the wheel. The number 1, 3 and 5 seems to be too soft for the wheel rubber and the second can be easily separated. Once we have selected the best options, it's time to test out the new mold concept. So I inject the sealants one by one into the molds. I have to be careful to ensure the sealant fills the whole mold for the wheel to be nice and smooth. I make sure to mark each mold to keep track of the sealants used. And after waiting two days, it was time to take apart the mold and hopefully we have the first rubber wheels for the casters. But again, it's easier said than done and removing the mold parts don't go as easily as planned before. I managed to remove some of the mold corners, however it damaged the tires a little bit. While taking a break from my struggles, I started to read what was on the tubing and realized that most of the sealants could be used as glue. <laughs> no wonder I can't take apart the molds. I probably should read more before doing stuff. But the tests we have done so far haven't been all for nothing. The sealant number 7 seems to be the best option for the wheels. And I'm quite confident the mold would have worked if we had used WD-40 before injecting the sealant. So I remade the mold and the only update I made was the centerpiece. Now it consists of two parts instead of one, which should make it easier for us to remove the rubber. Before assembling the new mold, I sprayed the plywood edges with the WD-40 a couple of times. I want the wood grain to be sealed with the oil. I waited for a half an hour between the spraying. After the third time, I assembled the molds and gave one last spray with the oil before injecting the sealants. 
And two days later I could remove the screws, cut off the excess rubber with the box knife and take apart the mold. The outside corners were easy to remove, however the center pieces required more force. But shortly we have the first two rubber discs for the caster project. And now it's just a matter of updating the wheels. But before I start cutting the new caster wheels, we have to make two more rubber discs. So I respray the mold with the WD-40, reassemble the parts and inject some more of the sealant stuff. One of the cool thing about the caster wheel project is that you can make the parts for them using the offcut pieces you have laying around the workshop. And the parts don't take much time to make. Cutting the new wheels required a couple of pocketing operations for the bearing and the wheel rubber and the contour cuts. For the contour cuts we had to use the support tabs, which had to be removed manually. To smoothen the contour edges I do a couple of passes with the sandpaper. Now we are almost ready to assemble the new caster wheel. We just have to take apart the mold for the remaining wheel rubbers. When we have all the parts for the wheels, we can start the assembling process. First I insert the bearings in the pockets in four of the wheel discs and then I add a little bit of the rubber seal to each rubber pocket. This should glue the rubbers to the plywood components and prevent the rubber disc from detaching from the casters or sliding inside the groove. Then I can add wood glue to the wooden components. It should cure quicker than the sealant. After I can insert the rubber wheels into the grooves and join the plywood components together. To ensure a good quality glue up I clamp the parts together. While the glue is setting I remove the casters we have attached to our bandsaw cabinet and take apart the wheels. All we have to do is take off one side part and remove the wheel component. Since it's the only part that has changed in the new update we don't need to remake the other caster part. By now the new wheels should be good for assembling. It's just a matter of adding them to the axis screws, securing them in place and reattaching the caster side component. And just like that the new wheels are complete. It's just a matter of testing them out. So I attach the casters to the bandsaw cabinet and moved it around the workshop. The result is surprisingly nice. The caster seems to be more silent while rolling around and you can barely feel the floor imperfections. So after all this struggle the project turned out to be a success and we have not only updated the caster wheel design but have found a good way to make a mold for rubber components that certainly will come in handy when building some of our next projects. Thank you for joining on this journey. And I'll see you next time.